Ba -ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba 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 Here we are. Oh god, there's a fourth person. Ah! You say something. Not usually here. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, hi. There you go. Thanks for <laughs> the sufficient for intro. You know, we just have so much variety in the form of what we cover and who we cover with. And we, I, I saw you tweeting about this little show and I was like, hey, that'll be fun. We could talk to you about it. The episodes that have come previously and are to come. So I guess we could simultaneously catch up quickly. What did you think of episodes one and two? I'm digging it so far. A few mm. missteps, but uh, nothing that egregious. I'm quite impressed with it overall. What would you say is the most praiseworthy thing? I'm tempted to say that it actually followed the game, which is what Halo should have done. <laughs> what would be the point of that? <laughs> but I, I don't think it needed to be exactly like the game, but I'm glad that it did. And I like how crazy the zombies are. They yeah, I mean, the people the playing the clickers around. are pretty neat. And uh, I just think the, the detail on the, uh, the prosthetics are really good as well. So you have, like, this grounded human drama, which I think Craig Mazin is quite good at. But you also have like the pulpy, like crazy zombies, it like t uh, turned up to a degree that we haven't really s that I haven't seen s since like twenty eight days later, where they, mm. they really feel like a threat. What do you mean? It's Walking Dead's me been of... out and going for years. Oh my god! Why does everyone hate Walking Dead? What did it do other than be horrible? Oh well, jeez, uh, <laughs> you make one mistake. <laughs> this it's it's quality so far. Mm. Well, uh, if you had the biggest criticism, what would it be? If I had to pick a thing, it's this even bothered me in the game where the soldier shoots at Joel and Sarah and it's like Joel should probably be dead, right? I mean he's like got shot point blank full auto. It's just like he was barely grazed and he just rolls down the hill and then I don't know, he the soldier takes his time, like reapproaching him and I don't know, I remember that kind of bugging me in the games and it kind of bugged me here again too. Yeah, it's uh, hard to even tweak that to fix it because you kind of to generate a scenario where someone shoots at them with a rifle and only tags his daughter and not him. It's like that's a very specific result that can be difficult to sort of provide because like, especially just a shot from a rifle it's just like, oh, you're both dead, surely. And you know, Tommy and turning just up the... just too late slash just too early to have either both of them or none of them die. Yeah, but that I think is just a small detail. It's not a huge deal. I didn't really get in the way. Some of the things I saw people talking about that they were surprised we didn't talk about, so I was curious if you guys have any additional thoughts, but um, everyone was very weirded out by Tess getting the tendril kiss before she dies. Do you have any commentary oh, yeah. for that? It doesn't strike me as too... I mean, it is weird, but all this is sort of weird. The question is really, like, is it weird in a way that doesn't seem to fit? their behavior, or if that's a setup for later. The tendrils almost seem like they're a, like a sensory organ, or they are like checking to her breath or something to see if she's infected, or something along those lines. Or it's like it's, a really fast way to infect someone, maybe? Maybe a really fast I way think to we saw, Was the old lady mouth. doing that in the first episode? When she yeah, like when, a... she, when she looks up, the tendrils come out of her mouth. And remember the first guy who's infected in uh, mm -hmm, Jakarta, yeah. the body has the tendrils coming out of it as, yes. uh, in the mouth as well. So oh, yeah, the tendrils are definitely a thing. I just meant the targeting of like mouth to mouth, uh, which may be a fast way to spread it. And that's why that happens that way. But part of what I thought suited about it was the fact that Tess was like absolutely terrified of becoming one of them. And then, like, talk about having a worse fear realized right before she actually kills herself. Like, it's that close and that sort of, that's like a violation in, in a couple of ways, right? Like, it uh, feels really, I think it's supposed to feel really gross. Yeah. Simultaneously, it's like, well, that has the effect of feeling gross to a lot of audience members. And so a lot of people were uncomfortable watching it. They didn't want to see that. Yeah. So. I would imagine that that was the feeling that they were trying to evoke with yeah. that scene. This is a deeply uncomfortable. <clears throat> yeah, like on a sort of on a specific level, and then on a broad level, right? Like it's not just yeah. that it's annihilated society; they are fucking disgusting. They take the human body and use it for whatever they want. It's like ugh. that tendril kiss. The, the the one thing that kind of threw me off about it is that I'm not sure what makes an infected go crazy biting someone and then doing something like that, where it's just like a weird leaning in for a, a kiss sort of thing. I thought Does the issue with that, that one a was human is there that she was moving very little, and so the clicker wasn't 100% sure of what was in front of it, maybe. Okay, and it, it was one of the blind ones, right? 
I'm not sure, actually. I need to check again. It looked like it uh, might have it had was a stalker, I think, and I'm pretty sure the stalkers are kind of partially blind because it's it's yeah. like you got runners who can still see, and then as the growth gets there, it becomes more and more difficult to see until they get to clickers when they can't see and they have to use echolocation. So it's kind of in the middle ground, that one. Right. And I don't know if the, the concept of she is infected and maybe she's giving off some kind of a a signal or some pheromone or some sort of something as much as i, uh, I, I think, think that's a fair that. that's idea a point um does that reflect with ellie at all i need i don't know mm. um i don't know if ellie be having it but being like immune to it is some something they can sense uh but I, I just don't know maybe yeah they have, i think i think they need to I, i'll believe it if they if they come up with an explanation or the or if they explain it i can go along with that the impression that i'm getting with these the the fact that episode one and two began with like sort of a delving into the nature of the infection makes me wonder if that's going to be something that gets explored way more in this show compared to in the game. Like, how it actually works and how a cure might come to exist, rather than just maybe a cure can actually come from this, you know? I'm, I'm guessing that they might be trying to actually delve into it a little bit more, how it works and how to stop it. Perhaps. I think it's fine, because I understand why they're doing it. Like, they... Craig Mason didn't want to do spores because then you'd have the actors with gas masks on a lot. And he said himself that that didn't, he felt that didn't translate to film very well. So it's like, okay, well there needs to be what component of the fungal growth infects other people. If you're not going to do spores, then it needs to be like tentacles. They've added in the sort of network aspect, which um, I think, Dude's fine. I've seen people say, like, they better stay consistent to it. It's like, it should be easy to stick to, right? Because it's either if the place is old and dry, then it won't have any, like, network potential. But if ever they um, fire at uh, or kill Cordyceps monsters where they fall onto, like, a floor that's covered in the same goop, then it can, like, translate messages and stuff. So it sounds like something they should be able to control pretty easily. And then it can also cause, you know, big drama on a whim. That's a better setup to have hordes appear than... Or just simply appear, you know? Yeah. So hopefully they use it well. But yeah. Yeah, yeah uh, the, the fungal network idea, I really dig. It's an interesting idea. Yeah, if they if they do it well, I could really be into it. We'll see how they actually, you know, utilize that new mechanic going forwards. We'll have to see, though. Yeah, we're we up to, to episode see. three now, where who knows what'll happen. I mean... Mm. Knowing exactly what happens in the game doesn't necessarily tell you what'll happen in the episodes. Not I've seen right. plenty of discussion for this one already, so we'll have lots of things to talk about once we're at the end of it. Whoa. Hubbo. Good da, old hubbo. Da, 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 da. Oh, that's a different one. Oh. Hmm. It's kind of like the... No pre-credits yeah. scene, evidently. Nah, we're moving on. We're moving past that. They've evolved that old, past that. That old cultural monolith. This is a new era. Look at all this grossness spreading. It's kind of like Cheese Whiz. And you never want that growing everywhere. And equally gross. Children eat Cheese Whiz and they think it's amazing. It just shows that children are retarded. Well, have you tried Cheese Whiz in different things? Maybe it really tastes good when it's uh, with with a um, ice cream. Ice cream? <laughs> a nice Cheese Whiz on the ice cream. You want oh, yeah. some chocolate syrup or some, you know, anything like that? Like, nah, I'll just have the Cheese Whiz. Just Get a big old swirly of it on, a big old spiral on the top, yellow and white. And that's what this intro evokes. Oh, it's prey. It took that rock a million years to get to shore, Charlie Brown. Now you've thrown it back. Now he's making art. Oh, no, out he of didn't it. throw it back. He is making art. Wow. Not bad, I know honestly. That Joel is an artist. Yeah, he found some good stones to stack up. Ellie's like, Joel, come on, are you still fucking around with those rocks? Yeah, that took him Let like three go. days of balancing. <laughs> yeah. We Finally. think he's a great artist, but he's a really bad artist. The power of editing. You want your jacket back? Oh, let's lemon spread. About, I don't want your sorry. I wasn't gonna say I'm sorry. Nobody made you a test take me. You needed a truck battery or whatever, and you made a choice. So don't blame me for something that isn't my fault. It's a bit of a subversion, right? Because the typical conversation is like, I'm sorry for what happened, and the person says it's not your fault. Her being like, please don't blame me for that. 
They probably went to like a real forest to do that. This is uh, a, you know what? This is a green I screen. They, uh, <laughs> it's getting, they, they're getting really, really good with them. Black Widow, the forest. Oh the god, forest. the fucking fake forest. Disney didn't have yeah. the, they, they didn't spring for going into the woods. But they had to green Wow, well, the thing is, it's more expensive to shoot outside because you have to pay attention to, like, your sunlight and, you know, weather conditions. It must be so There's annoying to know that, like, they can't just get away with it. They just can't. Yeah, like, it's Disney. <laughs> like, just go outside and fucking turn the camera on. What if it's rainy? The, the scene's rainy. It was all shot in Canada, so as a Canadian, you're welcome. Someone shot well, Canada's got them nice pine tree forests and everything. <laughs> yeah. You get it? Canada and also, land not, no, no cap on their two. tax credit in Alberta. Someone shot at me and missed. I missed too. It happens more often than you think. Because you suck at shooting or like in general? In general. Shooting guns is fucking hard, bitch. Well, I think that's, that's kind of neat, right? He's trying to say like most people miss most of the time. Vast majority you know, so of the shots will be misses. I, was thinking I, should no. I do wonder about that. I guess it is just a matter of character wise. He just doesn't. Would you say doesn't trust her, or just sees it as a bad move to give her a gun? Because you probably want... Bad move to give her a gun. You, you probably want your only other companion to have the capacity to save your life. Uh, in this situ situation, I don't know if I'd give her a gun either. Like, someone who's not familiar with firearms, I feel like they'd just be more of a danger to me. Especially if we're walking around the interiors and dark places, and we're jumpy and agitated. I don't want this person who's not used to guns having a gun. Well, yeah, not before you've had an opportunity to actually, you, you know, can't really, teach you how to use one. Plus, can't really like teach a... someone very well because you don't have ammo to spare, right? Oh, also, the too. element of, like, it's a handgun. They're really, really difficult to shoot accurately without practice. It would be safer to give her the fucking assault rifle, probably. I imagine it's she could have maybe gotten some light training. Like, if she's part of a military-esque, like, uh, It was a school. It was a training. It was like a school school. It was a Fedra school, right? Yeah. I don't know if they would have given training for weaponry. I... Nah, they're probably gonna save all that for actual, like, soldiers and militia. I guess. She's pretty young, too. I would, wouldn't be surprised if she hasn't had any training, but that's the thing, uh... If they do a payoff where she shoots her gun for the first time and she misses horrifically and the guns are really, really loud, and it, like, the recoil she's not used to, then that would be a nice payoff. And she'll say, eat this, and hit the infected right between the eyes. <laughs> From a mile away. <laughs> yeah. Blow hey, the so barrel. He just said, the barrel. you can go look around because this place has been cleared out. Like, there's nothing here. I hope she doesn't fucking find something. And you telling me that's something he missed, or? He hasn't even been back there yet. No, this is a place he's been before. We forgot where you put your stuff. No. I'm gonna... Take a look around, see if there's anything good. Trust me, it's all been picked over already. Oh, it is? Yeah, oh. yeah. this is a place he's been many times. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's he's currently getting his stash that he keeps here, and he, he said you can go look around because this place has been run over so many times that there's nothing to find. I don't believe for a second that he wouldn't have found this, so I hope there's nothing new down here. Are you going to jump down there without a way to get back up? Without even I telling just, Joel? <laughs> without telling Joel? Oh, gee, I, like I hope you don't no fucking... spooky music yet. I hope there's no spooky, sudden monster <laughs> down here, too. Well, that'll do it, I guess. That'll help. I like how it just holds on the eerie ambience of this, like, the stillness of it. Yeah, rather than hitting you over the head with, like, a musical track to get you freaked out. Yeah, like, bong. We're in the dark now, oh shit. Yeah. yeah. In the dark of the night, people will find... Ooh, oh. There is an infected, damn it. Of course there could be. Well, so, that's like a double whammy of annoying. Joel being like, you can go wander off because I've been here before and there's nothing here. It's like, that doesn't mean there isn't something here now. Yeah, the, yeah. the mobile nature of life is such <laughs> that maybe something has arrived since your last meeting. And to be honest with you, I wouldn't be surprised if at this point he was hyper-protective of her for the sake of Tess. As yeah. in, like, it is my job now to make sure you make it, no matter what. Well, that guy's, uh... He's ready Not for... Doing very well. He's ready for studying. He's, he's, he's like... Not gonna this hit is Ambonio. Oh, it's such a like gross disease, fungal flea. Yeah, pretty terrifying. Did we each find secret tunnels? Oh, looks like he's found his stash. Kind of interesting. It's following the knife. Yeah. Well, I'm guessing it's something they might be trying to sort of establish here, right? Is like be white. there's an element of humanity left in a uh, certain infected. You like the lady yeah, in the that's second real one. Gross. Jeez. Damn. 
Well, it's probably for the best. Because there was something that was a neat touch in the games is that the runners sometimes, when they're standing there, you can hear them crying. Because it's like they're still, they're still sort of aware of what's happening. Oof. Oh, really? Yeah, like they're still aware as, and they're slowly losing control until obviously once you start to get to clickers, they're like non-human anymore. Like yeah, Dying just, Light did like, that in a really creepy way too, where some of the ones who are like the more fresh zombies that are really quicker and they can climb, they, they say some things. They're zombies, but you could hear like actually a little bit of words coming out of them and stuff. No, no, no. And it's like, oh, that's like, ugh, that's uh, scary. I don't know if this comes across as nitpicking, but come on, you're not gonna tell him what you found. You literally found an infected over there in your safe stash place. Just saying, you know, it feels like they're doing the whole like she handled all of that on her own and didn't even mention it. One thing that would be good is to maybe like put that in a plastic bag or something and roll it up. Keep the moisture off of it. Also, it'd be oh nice to know God, how much ammo he actually had, because that would factor into whether or not I think it's a good decision to leave that behind. Or to just bring the magazine, or just the bullets, or... Dude, you got to go up in the sky. Yeah, well, so did they. Statistically, though, safest way to travel. Yeah, safer than trains. Fuck trains, am I right, guys? I mean, how did it even start? Cordyceps mutated. Some of it got into the food supply. Probably a basic ingredient like flour, sugar, bread, cereal, pancake mix. Cheese whiz. You eat enough of it, it'll get you infected. Day goes on. They start to get sick. And that's the thing too, right? They won't realize that the food's the reason that's done it, so they'll keep eating the food for at least a little bit longer. Yeah, and uh, depending on like the specifics of the virus or the, the fungus itself, it, you know, who knows what the incubation is or yeah i've heard there's there's like ants that will crawl all over something and then i'll start biting sure. so that they can coordinate instead of the first one on bites and then the rest what? don't get a chance so who knows if the fungus has here. some kind of semi-intelligence like that maybe serious ellie can it hurt me no be too honest man should have said axe murder whatever it was i think it's gone there's definitely a dynamic difference of um, their early on relationship in the game. I think he is much colder to her. Let me use that. I'm a pretty good shot with that thing. How about we just leave this kind of stuff to me? Well, we could both be armed. Cover each other. I don't think so. I need you to shut up. All right? Uh, yeah. I think some people think of him as more of a pushover in the show as a result of that when you know, it's easy to interpret, he's just less days. cold. I mean, there's a scene to come up that if I've seen in the room. trailers where he refers to her as cargo. If there wasn't. But I think he's just saying that in the moment, probably, because he's mad at her or something. He's definitely, like, warming up to her Those already. Aren't sick. I kill them. Dead people can't be infected. All right, so let's all kill ourselves. Well, so apparently that logic is, if there's, uh, the QZs are full, when they have people to come in, that they can't take care of, do they let them, I guess, run off, or do they kill them? Seems a little evil to fucking kill them. Yeah, like, if you just, yeah. if you're in the quarantine zone anyway, then why not just let the people outside of it... Stay outside it? of it? Yeah, especially if they're rural areas. I suppose, is that, like, they want us to believe that they just consider a, like, if a group of humans, they're just too fucking risky to let live, because they'll turn into zombies and come back, but... I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know about that. Like, what is the military r worried it's about not running even, out of bullets? It's not even just that the military decided that that would be something they would do. You have to believe that all of the people would enact that. All the soldiers. Which I don't, honestly. I just don't believe that. Not today, you new world order jackboot fucks. Well then, that looks like a bill. It looks like a man with a beard of the darkness. Yeah, because it feels weird that you have maybe like a locked off, almost locked off suburb sort of thing with a bunch of people just living their lives and then the government comes in, collects you up and quote unquote takes you to a QZ but then just executes all of you so that they can reduce the overall numbers of the Cordyceps zombies. It's like, really? That seems like a really mm -hmm. strange way of doing that. That involves a lot of policy. Extra yeah. I would almost do. say, like, shouldn't you want as many people as you can find and you want to expand and maintain, like, the workers to have a growing quarantine zone, right? 
You want to build up a city almost eventually. Do you not slowly open the door and peer out? Do you do you just burst open out the front door and then start looking around? Don't you? I don't know. I feel like if they were just here, uh, I wouldn't just I just wouldn't go outside that day. I should've got cameras. Just stay safe yeah. for a while. I'd just be hanging out. Finally, I can go boating. <laughs> What are you? Ooh, he's, he's splurging. He's getting supreme. Why not, innit? I feel like everybody the would The home de pot. That's French for the toilet. Where was Homé? That was fast. That Home Depot's a gold mine. I mean, it's... Wires, outlets, plugs, lumber that's already pre-cut, measured. Yeah. Ooh, gold mine. All the tools, the last of lifetime. Well, the fact that he already had a um, a hidden underground thing going on, it's like he's he's like the kind of guy that a person who just like a prepper. Yeah, prepper. Yeah. So yeah, he he would know better than most probably how much of uh, he's got to be able to use. He's probably just been dreaming of the day. The kind of person who believes that the apocalypse is always just around the corner. Yeah. In this case, it, it was. Has finally come. <laughs> yeah. And the, if anything, he's uh. This is element. <laughs> Arot? Chicken? So yeah, it's worth mentioning, I guess, that what's interesting about this episode is that, um, as far as I'm aware, we're not getting any more Joel and Ellie now. It's all going to be about this guy. Well, and this marks, like, the first sort of, I guess, major deviation is that we, we meet Bill uh, just during Joel and Ellie's main adventure. We never got to see the whole story of Bill. Yeah. I had somebody that I cared about. A partner. Somebody I had to look after. And, and then and then his relationship with Frank. And obviously we saw what the end of that looked like, but we didn't get to see it play out, so Yeah, obviously you're referring to the game. Um Yeah. Because this is already different, but you can see what pieces they've pulled, or at least how they've come yeah. to make this as a story. Well, I mean, we already knew Bill was, like, hyper-prepped. His whole town was filled with traps and everything. Yeah, which is obviously reflected already here. Yeah. Oh. Hmm. It doesn't get old. What's interesting now, making me think, is, like, is, have we almost done a flip of the convention of the first two episodes, being that we have an opening scene to provide some context about another part of the world that relates to the progress of the infection thing and then we get Joel and Ellie slash the main story this time we had an opening scene with them and the rest of the episode is going to be big old uh, Bill yeah you know like something that's not them to just it's almost yeah. like a flip yeah I guess it keeps you on your toes you never know what to expect in an episode even if you played the game well it's TV in it because yeah it ain't a game so we do different things here of course that's another thing is we don't have to make gameplay segments well it just means you can have these long stretches of no combat it is one of the challenges of telling a story in a game when you have a bunch of combat. I remember in the game being really fascinated with Bill and Frank's relationship and wanting to know a bit more about it beyond just the letter that was left. So I'm, I'm yeah, glad that the show is doing this. Like it feels like an opportunity bit. if done well. Are you armed? No. Why did you take that long to answer? I thought about lying for some reason, but the reason didn't come. I was actually thinking about that. Yeah, like, are you armed? It's like, if I say no, maybe they won't think of me as a potential, yeah, like, I can handle ten. myself sort of thing. I'm alone. From where? Baltimore QZ? It's gone. Are you hurt? Yeah, I fell in a just, hole. Just a bruise. What do you think of the likelihood of getting out of that hole yourself? Uh, 100%. You With dig, enough like, time, yeah. yeah. <laughs> dig it little notches dirt. in there. Yeah. We're gonna deep rock galactic our way out of this ditch. <laughs> yeah. No, no, dig up, stupid. How are we gonna get out of here? We'll dig our way out! <laughs> no, no, dig up, stupid! <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's got a little infection tracker, good. How'd you get that? Found it. None of your goddamn business. He was just laying there, on the ground. On that guy I killed. <laughs> God, it was so fucking hard to trust anybody in this environment, you know? Yeah. Boston is that way. You can make it by nightfall. I'm really hungry. 
I'm letting you go, so go. All right. Look, my yeah. name's Frank. Oh, yeah? yeah? Here's the thing, Frank. Then every bum you talk to about it is gonna show up here looking for a free lunch. And this is not an Arby's. Well, Arby's didn't have free lunch. It was a restaurant. You don't have free lunch at Arby's. That's true. I won't talk about it to any bums or hobos or vagabonds, I promise. I've only got so much cheese whiz. I can't feed everybody. <laughs> I'll spare it. He has like a silo of cheese whiz. <laughs> that old classic, isn't it? You feel pretty safe probably getting rid of this guy. But then you also feel pretty bad if he's just a guy. I'm going to go ahead and bet that Bill's not super social. Or at least he wasn't. No one named Bill is social. Living on his own for like four years. I left some clothes here for you. Which is enough to make anybody who isn't social sort of... Especially in the midst of a post-apocalypse too. Yeah, like, how long can you last entertaining yourself off of, like, because he's, he's secured himself real well, sure. but you'll eventually finish sure. all of your tasks, you know? Thank you. Yeah. And then you'll be like, now what? Amazing. See? It's about someone else is enjoying stuff. I mean, I'm trying to think of other stories that have done this, but like, yeah, just enjoying something is one thing, but enjoying it with other people is, is a whole other thing. Somebody out of dust. No one touches my dust. <laughs> <laughs> it's been taking me years to cultivate that fine <laughs> dust. You put your fingers all over it. <laughs> this would be probably mind blowing if you've been living in the apocalypse for like years. What the fuck? Everything tastes good when you're starving. Yeah, but not like <laughs> Yeah, but that's like a meal. Yeah, but yeah, it's been four years. I remember what food tastes like. A man who knows to pair rabbit with a bow. It would actually be enough to make you forget know, briefly that the, the world has ended and there's zombies outside. Yeah, this is like so unexpectedly awesome. I always keep a gun on in case the rabbits get, you know, jumpy. But rabbits jump all the time, right? Thank you. You're welcome. What year so was this? I did they say? Be going well, this is four never. years later, so yeah. Because I'm just trying to figure out the ages right now. Like they would, however old they are now, we got another. But first, twenty years. Well, they're sixteen years from here. Uh, wow. You know how much these are worth? Currently, nothing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> these aren't yours. My mother's. Could uh, you uh, not? This is you. <laughs> Imagine you took your job so seriously, like, you'll be playing piano, like, one episode of one TV show that you'll be a part of, and it's like, I must learn how to do it myself. <laughs> like, oh, well, that's not really necessary. It's like, no, I must. So, no, Might just be that fundamentally it's like, no, don't do this. You gotta make me like you, and then I'm gonna have you stay, and I don't want- I don't want that. <laughs> I wanna be on my own. Oh, you definitely get a big old sense that he's like closed off, but simultaneously show he's he's taking a lot of actions to show that he clearly wants to do stuff with someone. Yeah. Might call it multi-dimensional. Sounds like good advice. I like this. Like neither one of them want to leave or want the other person to leave, but they they don't want to weird the other person out. Yeah. Yeah, it's all super awkward, but a lot of also desperate. And look, it's music that's uh, being able to bind them. I mean, that feels deliberate, right? Like, it's food, drink, and music. Like, it's all just experiences. Right. I always like it when Nick Offman shows up in anything. Find him fun, which is well, funny Well, I think because... when everybody found out that he was going to be playing Bill, that was really exciting. It was just like, that seems perfect. We liked him in Fargo. Swanson. Who's the girl? Girl you're singing about. There is no girl. You like it when your beard touches another beard? <laughs> he doesn't even know his name, that's true. Bill. Oh, funny, right? Bill and Frank. Bill and yeah. Frank are, yeah, like this. The, they go, we need names. Who are they going to be? I don't know. Frank, Bill. Go take a Bob shot. and Joe. <laughs> well, hey, it's been a while for both of them, I suppose. Well, it's uh, it's official. Pianos are gay. What would be the straight instrument? Guitar? Accordions, <laughs> actually. Electric guitar. <laughs> I don't 
have sex for lunches. Have sex for brunches. Not even great ones. Not even great ones. If I do this, I'm gonna stay for a few more days. Wait, isn't that just the same thing? That but makes you more, more of. <laughs> yeah, that, like, that actually makes you seem like more of a whore. You're a frugal whore. Yeah, it sounds like you're not. You're just negotiating, honestly. Yeah, I thought he was gonna go the direction of like this means something to me, as opposed to I'm bartering for more than just a meal here. Okay, <laughs> like I'm getting a couple days. I think he also knows that Bill probably doesn't want him to go, either. Oh God, the no-no zone. Oh. Well, it's interesting, right? Because Bill comes across quite hey, strong and antisocial, but in an environment like that, he's fucking ever? super vulnerable. Right. Why we... This is for us. Who cares what they look like? I do. Oh, we're getting our racist. Home isn't just our <laughs> you live in a psycho bunker where 9-11 was an inside job and, and the government are all Nazis. The government are all Nazis! Well, yeah, now, but not then. <laughs> not then. <laughs> <laughs> I am asking for some paint and some gasoline for the lawnmower, that's all. I'll do everything else myself. Oh, he wants to, like, make the place look nice, I guess. Management? Okay, okay. Just tell me why. Paying attention to things. It's how we show love. And I'm fixing up some of the shops. Whoa, Not the whoa. stupid ones, just the, the wine shop and the furniture store. Wait, what are the stupid ones? And the clothing boutique. Anything that isn't a wine shop or a furniture a store. Boutique. Or a clothing boutique. <laughs> Are we hosting the memory a store for the the memory store. We're gonna make friends. And we will invite them to visit. There are no friends to be had. Well, I've actually been talking to a nice woman on the radio. What? You what? <laughs> yeah, that, that's a good reaction. Really is just, it's amazing. Right? Mm -hmm. Can you oh my god! <laughs> he just got his pistol. <laughs> Hey! Oh, you're a paranoid schizophrenic too? I'm not schizophrenic. <laughs> but I am paranoid. It's a very nice dovetailing of the plot lines. Mm. I like this. Well, can I? How nice this is to have a civilized meal in such a, a beautiful place. It's been so long. I mean, I just uh, I want to thank you, even if we don't end up working together. He's got his gun really on the table. Yeah. <laughs> We are together. I think I haven't had a meal of this uh, caliber and such. I mean, a fine meal uh, in such <laughs> a lot of time. Uh, Frank! Uh, Ellie asked about Frank and Bill. I think Joel said Frank is nice. So, yeah. He clicks the hammer back now that it's just <laughs> <my> them <laughs> too. Again, yeah. I wouldn't be happy either. But of all the people he could have found on the radio, we're actually decent people just trying to get by. Uh huh. What a oh. coincidence. <laughs> Well, aren't I the lucky one? Books, medicine, machine parts. We can help each other and get that gun out of my face. Prepper or something? Survivalist. We're self-sufficient here. I don't need you or your friend complicating our lives. That fence has got a year on it, tops. Galvanized wire already started to corrode. I can get you ten spools of high tensile. Kind of neat, right? Because it's not only that he's been living in the post apocalypse, but that Joel is, uh, he was like a contractor for buildings and stuff. Yep. Wow. Yeah, he'll know about materials and stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. It's just the reality of well, stories like just, this, um, where working together will get you results you wouldn't even well, expect. Yeah, I think it's pretty clear that that's what we're going for here, right? Is like Bill's notion of self sufficiency is, is kind of like not real. There are certain things that he doesn't know, and there are certain things that he can't do for himself, yeah. and there are certain needs that can't be fulfilled in the absence of other people. No matter how, but then yeah, you, you might, might have like to it. cooperate with other people as independent but, as you think you are, you know. But that just invariably exposes him to new dangers. Of course, yep. it does. Because like, yeah, maybe Joel and Tess yeah. really. You know, maybe Joel and Tess are nice, but what about the next well, people? The thing is, and Joel just said, like, you know, warning, there will be raiders eventually. I would almost be able to interpret that as a threat. Yeah, that's almost like maybe, what I yeah. think, but maybe but it depends I mean, on the conversation like and their dynamic, like, but... It's just that you can't you know, know, isn't it? Because it's like, if Joel asks you to cooperate the nice way, and if you don't, he might yeah. bring back his friends someday. But then there's just mm. the... It gets to the illusion of safety that he has here that's, you know, it's like... Yeah. Yeah, well... <laughs> How'd you get those cars like that? Maybe they found a... They lifted them. <laughs> Must have had a crane or something. <laughs> yeah. I think both of their beards oh. have changed color. Yeah, traded Joel and Tess when you were gone. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're getting gone. older. Strawberries! See, you wouldn't have this unless you were nice to Joel.
Oh, I don't take the 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 leaves off. I use them as a little handle. <laughs> Sometimes too. I go back and forth. <laughs> I eat the leaves. They're good for you. Calcium. I am very thankful. I know. I'm sorry. I'm allergic to strawberries. I should have told you. Getting older faster than you. Older means we're still here. I was never afraid before you showed up. Because he had nothing to lose. That's a cool line. Yeah, that is a good line. Though I guess it's particularly uh, sad if you know where this ends. Well, Did and you kissed me in the strawberry patch. Strawberries. <laughs> I mean, how can you not as well start to link this? What do you think the point of all this is? To rip it away from him. Well, I mean, the point broadly would be like, yeah, that's kind of the trade-off, isn't it? For these, like, really... Uh-oh, what's about to happen here? Oh, we got raiders. What I was going to say is the... What do you think Ellie represents in Joel's life, right? It's a, it's a reason someone he cares about so much. Because it seems like what we're gunning for with Bill was that he was surviving, but he wasn't oh, living. Wow. Oh, jeez. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was surviving, but he wasn't getting much out of life. He was simply existing, if anything. Yeah, now that's why he's everything's different now, because this is yeah. actually great for him. Oh, but... Now he has something that he can lose. I sure do hope nothing bad happens to anybody. I just feel like that's going to be what we're supposed to incorporate into thinking about Joel and Ellie. Is... Oh, sure. Which is what I yeah. think a lot of side characters are supposed to do, right? And y'all don't keep a well, rifle in the bedroom? Different, yeah. No, don't go outside. Now they can see you. I don't even know if Bill's given this guy, like, proper instruction of what to do and where to go. Oh, there's Bill. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking hell, he's still there. <laughs> just getting flamethrowed. Oh, he should wow, be in Bill, cover, dude. You, alive? you gotta... Wow, you're just, uh... like, standing out in the open. You wouldn't have thought... Like a doomsday prepper type, he'd be yeah. like in a, in a bird's nest sort of thing, wouldn't he? Not just yeah, standing out like, there like doesn't that. Doesn't he have like a bunker? Does he not have a... A bulletproof vest at the very least? Yeah, yeah, you'd think. I guess if he went out there in a rush, but still. It feels really weird to just shoot out in the you open like that. Yeah, you're not even going to shoot from the windows of the um, the house and everything? Alright, Bill, you got shot because you were standing in the street. You need to work on that. that next time, buddy. Yeah, that was really dumb, Bill. I don't expect this kind of sloppy maneuvering Frick! from you. Frick! Fence, I'll kill the rest of them. Okay. If they just wander into the fence, I guess. List for Joel. Uh -huh. You ain't dead yet. <laughs> that could just be a flash wound. You might be alright. Kind of interesting that he would, in desperate moments, tell him to go to Joel. That must mean that he believes that Joel is the kind of person that would take care of people. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I've definitely gone on now. 2023. Santa? Maybe kind of a young Santa. He looks like Jordan Peterson from that angle. <laughs> <laughs> Did you clean your room? They gave Nick Offerman loads of. Are they called liver spots? The spots you get when you get older? Yeah. I think so. I think they may have, may have given him a little too many. I call them <laughs> wisdom speckles. I'm not fighting about it. Back in I bed. I promise you I'm gonna stay up. Why? Because this is my last day. What if we find a doctor? What if what if someone shows up who can help? Who's coming, Bill? The door-to-door -door MRI salesman? I'm not gonna give you the every day was a wonderful gift from God speech. I have had a lot of bad days. I've had bad days with you, too. Just give me one more good day. Then you will crush all of these up. Put them in my wine. I will drink it. <sighs> I can't. Well, I don't really have commentary for this. It's just sad. Yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm just watching. It's very sad. Yeah, I have commentary. That's an ugly shirt. Some, um, obviously, it's realities of... Stuff shit like this happens in real life, but uh, this would totally happen in post apocalyptic places because there's so much less ability to circumvent disease and. Well, just, yeah, that he got sick, you know? And there was nothing that could be done about it. 
what is The Last of Us as a game's point all about, isn't it? Like, it's worth hanging on to what remains of the best of experiences we can have with each other as opposed to desperately clinging to just exist. Um, yeah. yeah. That's what it felt felt like by the time you hit the end of the game, right? Like, Joel is like, yeah, Ellie's worth everything. And I imagine that's what's being reflected here. Oh, and I yeah. see what we're doing here. It's what it, the first meeting between yeah, these it's the two. Same meal first as well. dinner, and this is the last, yeah. With the wine. I mean, it's hard to portray like a, a whole, a, what, two decade long relationship in just 40 minutes ish. Yeah. Good zigzag. They get along, they fight. One One's life is in danger, and then it's flipped now. Yeah, it feels like they covered all of the necessary beats to get to this point. Yeah. All the things that a normal relationship has, you know. <laughs> Why are there already pills in the bottle? Enough to kill a horse. I'm old. I'm satisfied. And you were my purpose. Oh, I should be furious. It's incredibly romantic. That is a big deviation from the game. I was watching this episode wondering if they were going to do this. Well, so the thing about it is that felt uh, appropriate considering the story they've been telling. Given all the context that we had, yeah, this does seem like... This seems like something that would happen. Oh. Man, there's a lot of trust giving him the, uh... Yeah. ...code. I quite like that that's a sign that something's very wrong. Yep. Yeah. It's from Bill. Who was this? So they're dead? Mm-hmm. You, you want to take anything you need. The bunker code is the same as the gate code, but in reverse. But still, it's like we're friends. Almost. And I respect you. I used to hate the world, and I was happy when everyone died. I saved him. Yeah, there you go. Him. That's why men like you and me are here. We have a job to do. And God help any motherfuckers who stand in our way. I leave you all of my weapons and equipment. Use them to keep... Oh, I'd be tasked on it. Yep. Stay here. Yeah, the game is, his portion is all about getting a car in working order, right? Yes, yeah. and it looks just like this car as well. They have to go to the school to get the battery, I think. And then shit tons of infected arrive. And that was the reveal of the bloater as a boss, so I think people might have been disappointed with, like, the no bloater reveal yet. But that's... Oh, well, again, obviously, you know, give it time. <laughs> You'll get your bloater, probably. Sure. Listen, about Tess. Hey, look, um, about Tess, I, I don't even know what Here's how this thing's gonna play out. If I'm taking you with me, there's some rules you gotta follow. Rule one, you don't bring up Tess, ever. You don't bring up Tess, ever. Matter of fact, we can just keep our histories to ourselves. Matter of fact, we can just keep our histories to ourselves. Rule two, you don't tell anyone about your condition. Secondly, don't tell anybody about your condition. If they think you're crazy, they'll try to kill you. They see that bite mark, they won't think it through, they'll just shoot you. Rule three, you do what I say when I say it. And lastly, you do what I say when I say it. We clear? We clear. Yes. Repeat it. What you say goes. Sure. Repeat it. What you say goes. 
good. Yeah, they got some stocking up to do. This guy was a genius. I guess this is a good stash, right? As opposed to take everything from here. Grab some cans from over there. Nothing dented or swollen. Dude. No. There's a wall of them. Fucking with clocks. Pretty. Shut up. Maybe the odds are pretty high. She saves him with the gun. Later yeah, that's a, he's like, well, where did you get the that? Payoff, right? They'll do the the one from the game. Yeah. It's your first time. That was kind of funny. Shit, shit. I wonder what it's like to approach a car without any context of it. I guess it would be pretty interesting. Yeah. Is it weird that I think sometimes when I'm driving, like, what if, like, a, in a time machine, like, George Washington or something was in my car and I had to explain yeah. to him not to panic on the road because everyone stays in the lines. <laughs> you're just like, ah! And you're like, no, you're like, no, 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 it's no, fine. No. We, we all stay in the lines. It's great. There's rules. This is Linda Ronstadt. Do you know who Linda Ronstadt is? No, I don't know who Linda Ronstadt is. You know, that is actually before my time. <laughs> that is winter, though. Well, better than nothing. Better than nothing. That'll be the bedroom window then. Yeah. That was a pretty great episode. Yeah, that was really nice. I really like that. Good. Um, knew exactly what its goal was and it achieved it. Yeah, yeah. it seems like it did. Bill. Well, it's just a great example of like how to tell a very complete story in a single episode of television. To tell a complete story with a theme that was set up and paid off and reinforced and ties into the broader theme of the, uh, what, well, presumably will be the broader theme of the show, if the game is any indication. Yeah, and it's just, they chose a really good character from the game to use for this story, because they managed to yeah. even get to keep a lot of his elements. Obviously, he stripped away a couple, but, uh, and he doesn't get to well, interact with... Well, the role that with... he plays in the story is different, very different from the role that he played in the uh, right. in the game in the game it was much more of an active role in the main plot whereas here it's much more of a thematic role yeah what he passes on in terms of support and help to joel is much more um it's done in the form of that that message right like oh, i feel like planting the seed for a, a later character choice and i imagine that those will be consistently reinforced with i mean with like when is... he with tommy henry and sam i imagine that all of those stories will sort of uh be you know building up that core motivation Bill's gonna feel like he failed with Tess to some degree now and it's like ellie yeah. is his uh second go around second but dad. in the same well, way obviously dad. the well right kind of well those are like that's what it all comes down to he's supposed to protect these people and uh yeah. if they yeah. die that means that's he's uh, fucked he up failed. Yeah. They didn't have him uh, cry after reading it. You can tell he's um, he's struggling. Pretty with... upset. Yeah. Especially because he probably well, fucking I... liked Frank and Bill. Um, after knowing them for that long, like like when he's just like they're dead and he's just sort of staring, having to deal with this. Yeah. Everyone keeps fucking dying. So I think in the games he did serve a thematic purpose there as well. I, the, it's the theme is different. Obviously, he served the obvious function of like providing the car battery. And also having like the school set piece and the the bloater boss fight, but uh, he also represented to Joel on his journey what you can turn into if you wall yourself off completely. Once upon a time, I had somebody that I cared about, a partner, somebody I had to look after. And in this world, that sort of shit's good for one thing getting you killed so you know what i did i wasn't the fuck up and i realized it's got to be just me yeah I, I don't mean to uh people. certainly don't mean to downplay the uh the, the role that he played i guess it's more so that in this one when you strip so much of that away it just lays bare like this case is very much a uh thematic sort of story because it doesn't yeah. tie directly into helping joel and ellie on their quest really at all 
Whereas in the game, it was kind of, yeah, it was doing two things at once. It had the plot stuff, but then it also had, this is Bill, This is, these are his outcomes, and Joel has to sort of consider those outcomes and maybe think about whether he wants, you know, what he could do to avoid the situation that Bill finds himself in. Totally alone, better, miserable. Yeah, and super actually, secure, but like, just is that worth it when you've well, got... Existing, right? He's yeah. existing. Whereas what we saw here was Bill was existing and then he was living and he got a lot out of that relationship. And it, and the, the ending, of course, as well, because in the game, Frank disappears and then he finds out what actually happened to him. And it's like, that's something that he has to deal with. Whereas here, it's a very different story in that regard. But there's obviously inspiration. They've taken elements, moved things around. Yeah. Adapted. Well, they've created something pretty new um, with this story. But at the same time, you can see how they got it from the game. And I was I was pretty impressed with uh, the work that they did for those two characters, considering that it was just one episode. I feel like you get to see that whole relationship sort of play out, even though you're only really seeing flashpoints of, like, big significant moments. It feels like a relationship that lasted 16 years there by the end. Like, that felt like a relationship that had matured and sort of endured for, for many, many years. Yeah, it's very believable. Um, it's it's very, very easy to buy. Sure, because obviously we can tell all kinds of different stories could have gone hideously wrong, right? And that Frank was just an asshole and took everything from him or yeah. killed him or whatever, but it's just a genuine sort of antisocial closed off man who thought the whole world may end and hates the government is thriving in this environment almost. But he doesn't have everything. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. And then this one person comes into his life and, and, and totally and completely enriches it. Well, and the, they have that scene, right? This guy, this guy is, Bill might even describe this guy as useless, as in, like, his talents uh, are almost in the aesthetic, and uh, he cares about him, he's aware of music, but, like, what, what is what is his pragmatic use of this environment? It's like, we didn't see a huge amount of it, to the point where uh, Bill says immediately when he thinks he's dying, you gotta get Joel, because Joel can take care of you. You know, like, cause without you, like me to look after you, how long will you really last? Because obviously he was dying when you found him. But yeah. he values him more than anything. Well, yeah, because we saw that even in him allowing, it's like, you know, he was trying to min-max, right? Bill's like, well, yeah, but, you know, this doesn't serve any clear utility, so why would we do this? Whereas, you know, Frank is more like, well, it's, uh, you know, in terms of re rejuvenating the house and everything. It's like, what is the utility? It's like, I guess there's no strict utility, but it makes you happier, so, you know, like, it might as well, right? It's kind of like, that's what the two complement each other very well. Well, they, they created a little paradise for themselves in hell. Yeah. Yes. And uh, I like that about it. I uh, really I, liked that relationship yeah. that those two had. And you, that kind of is summed up by the, like the last shot where you it, it like tracks into the bedroom and then you focus rack from the outside to the inside in the little perfect home that they built for themselves and it represents like a life lived, loved and lost. Yeah, the, the, they it have a clear zigzag the... pattern as well that goes into the right the distance. I can imagine people being disappointed who are fans of the games who wanted the punished Bill phase where. Like he's still alive when Joel and Ellie come around. Yeah. Like if it was if it wasn't for the line where he put the pills in the bottle enough to kill a horse, it's like that's them the aud like the writers telling the audience like oh he's dead after this. Okay. If it wasn't for that, I would, I was kind of half expecting Bill to like show up at, at the very end and be like the hell are you doing in my house? You know like and then the I next episode is... would be like the adventures with what, Bill adventure where you get together. to see him yeah. crazy like unhinged and what this losing frank has done to him like he's driven him a you bit you could loopy. tell that story yeah. i i think you could yeah. i guess by the time it was him like frank old and sick there was a thought in the back of my head of you know you could deviate from the games here like you yeah. could you could do something different and and i was sort of the uh, the longer time went on the more i was thinking i think you are i think you're about to deviate here and I think that it is a choice that's totally legitimate. Yeah, I, th I think it works. This is a different thematic route of... Because the key that makes this work, I think, is, like you pointed out, Mahler, the line in the, the letter. I saved someone who was worth saving, right? Yeah. And then that's And, like and of course, the think. subtext is that Frank saved him as well, you know? Like, yeah, he saved somebody's life. Which is Frank exactly really what Joel and, Joel and Ellie is. 
was going to pretty be. much yeah that, that right. through saving ellie joel basically sort of rediscovers that the, this uh ability to care for others and something that he lost you know somewhere along the way right yeah well, it's, it's a it's a funny thing right but uh frank reaching out and uh talking to tess is incredibly risky but you know it leads to them having that relationship they exchange supplies back and forth and then to the point where if bill thinks he's gonna die he has someone that he can, you know, get Frank to sort of thing, which, and he has someone he cares about. He, he leaves Joel and Tess uh, all of his stuff. It's like, it's, it was worthwhile, but he's just, he's just that careful, that uh, secluded almost, even though you're getting lots of evidence that you don't have to be. Yeah. And it, it makes sense that he decided to go with him, you know, because it's like, what am I sticking around for after this? Like, if you're gone, I know there's nothing. Like, I know what's waiting for me after this, and it's just, Days and days be going of back to his old life, I, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and it's made me think, like, well, in the game he stuck around, but then I remember in the game he doesn't know he Frank died until he finds him. Yeah. Well, no, because like, he was bitter he about himself. it. He thought Frank abandoned him. Right. Yeah. They find him dead. Yeah. Which right. again, I feel like you can't have that one in this when you've built it this way. You wouldn't have, Frank wouldn't abandon Bill with the way that no, these two are. No. Like I was saying before, I remember in the games being really interested in this relationship and wanting to know more. And so the show decided to do that with its unique format, which I think is a good idea. And if you're going to do that, then this is the route that makes sense, is to just let, let, that, let, let that life play out. And then it makes sense for... Um, it wouldn't make sense if you were to just stick around, I don't think. I like the story in and of itself, like, and then I just like how much it... it what it has to say about what I assume will be the season overall, but certainly Joel and Ellie, and Joel and Dara, and Joel and Tess. It's the reality of, I quite like that Bill sees a lot of himself in Joel, which is a, both a good thing and bad thing. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, I don't think in any of that montage we saw what he does for fun. We just saw all of the pragmatic stuff, which I think is kind of the point. This is fun uh, for him, but as soon as it runs out, then what? Meanwhile, when you have right. someone, you know, every single day is a, is a new experience. The discussion I've seen around this episode is the, for one, boring as a criticism. Yeah, I guess I'm not surprised that people call it boring, but Makes um, sense. it's not. <laughs> but um, I don't yeah, find like, it boring. Make, well, like, yeah, I, 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 I don't get find it, it boring at all. I didn't think it was boring at all. I wanted to see, uh, wanted to see what was, uh, what was going to happen. And uh, it seems deliberate and purposeful. And I'm really glad that we got to see an episode where you're kind of reminded those things do still get made, actually. I think yeah. it's neat, too, to just have our main characters be guest characters in this episode. I quite like the scenes with Joel and Bill. And maybe there is a sense in my head, it's like, it would have been cool to have had more for a maybe punished Bill with, with Joel and Ellie. All the dialogue you get with that is now not possible. Who the fuck is this punk and what's she doing here? I am none of your goddamn business and we're here because you owe Joel some favors. And oh. You can start by taking these off. I owe Joel some favors. Is some kind of joke? Yeah, sure, Joel. Go ahead. Take my car. Take all my food, too, while you're at it. By the looks of it, you could lose some of that food. Listen to me, you little shit. No, fuck you! You hang- Hey! What'd I say to you when we walked down the steps? What'd I say? I'm just fixing your stupid pile. Don't touch. <sighs> but I suppose that is a different story that can be told. There are so many that can be told, so many lines that could have come out, so many different directions you can take. I just, uh, I think sometimes people will just assume the alternative would have been way better instead of sort of appreciating this for what it is and what they did. There's yes. pros to both methods. I remember in the game, I really like the last exchange with Bill. It's like, we square. We're square. And get the fuck out of my town. And then that's the end. And Joel's just like nods. He understands because there's like, shit between them from the past and but it's like whatever water under the bridge and then they'll never see each other again after that i like the bittersweet but this it works the human drama was really well executed it's a good little story really well acted yeah i thought the acting was terrific the guy ron swanson parks Gordon. and rec guy i his performance was great and it's it was evidence fantastic. to me yeah craig mazin has figured out the secret of casting comedians for shit like this. Funny guys, they just understand the role. They understand grief. 
like a familiarity with grief could be that a lot of jokes are drawn from pointing out just things that suck about life but in a format that we can all sort of just laugh at it instead of be depressed or anything yeah that's what i mean there's sort of a foundation of pain when you get like a belly laugh off a really funny joke not all the time but i find the best comedians you know like richard pryor would joke about his personal life and go into really dark shit and he would extract like that like that comedy, comedy can it. speak to the core of the human experience and that includes tragedy and sadness yeah. that like and in so order think... to be great a familiarity and understanding of that seems like almost a prerequisite and maybe that's just you can translate that to a dramatic performance in a way that is almost surprisingly adept because people sometimes don't think of comedy as like deeply tragic right yeah and so i think good comedians they are aware of that, but they don't really have an opportunity to utilize it on the stage because you don't want to make people sad. But then when yeah. it comes time to act out a sad scene in a show like this, it's very easy for them to channel into that and finally utilize it. And it'll explain like why you did so well. Here, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, even like as well, it just it feels a little bit more vibrant than your average um, storytelling as well. Just for example, are you armed? And then a gap of about four seconds or whatever, and he goes, no. And he just goes, why'd you take so long to say no? Like, it just feels like something <laughs> normal you would probably point out. And then, of course, him moving into like, well, because, I don't know, it felt like something maybe I should lie about, but I don't know why I thought that. I don't know. It's like, yeah, because yeah. this is an incredibly high stress situation. He thinks he's going to be dead. Anyway, I don't know. There's just a lot of real stuff in this that keeps me bound to it. I quite like it. It all seems genuine. It's well written. Yeah. And their relationship well felt genuine. It didn't feel like it was pandering at all. Like it was all really like I bought it. Yeah. Acting was superb. It was. Yeah. I bought um, all of it. 100%. Everyone did a great job. <laughs> like as much as all of that is true. Unfortunately, I feel like this is because I've already seen pieces of it. But you already know people are going to take issue with this because of the fact that it's a gay couple Woke. for a whole episode. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, 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 uh, whatever. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, uh, is that something that's going to get in the way of you appreciating some great storytelling? I don't know. Like, doesn't like yeah. I, I don't know. It just feels like a neat idea that you have a guy who is looking for companionship but has created all of the walls around him to essentially prevent all of that but he keeps him safe it feels interesting as well considering that again the apocalypse here began in 2003 and they would have met and almost you know it's kind of like the world hits pause right wherever it was at because you see yeah. that a lot right the cars are all early 2000s yeah that mortal kombat to i mean mortal kombat was obviously in the 90s but you know like references and media and stuff kind of comes to an end there but i mean even then right the the context of their relationship in 2003 it's like well yeah, I mean, there weren't a lot of, like, it feels, you know, the fact that they get married at the end, right? It's like, well, you're in a world where, like, whatever rules previously existed about saying whether or not you're allowed to do that doesn't exist anymore. It, it just makes me wonder if that's something that kind of is, like, an element that can be leveraged is knowing sort of when the world hit pause for them. And, like, how yeah. much that might have influenced sort of Bill's, you know, closed-off nature. Like, that at that time, it might not have been as easy for him to sort of find love. Yeah, it's just a thought I'm having, given given that it would have been, you know, 2006, seven when they met. And, um, Had yeah. to wait until the after the fungal zombie apocalypse to be able to get married. <laughs> to be able to live, yeah, to be able to live, like, honestly and, and fully, right? It's kind of something to think about. I would just go as far as saying there's no reason to desperately make the game and the show fight on this one like oh, i don't yeah they're no. just so distinctly just two different concepts oh. that are played out um it's, and they both are done it, really well it's yeah. um it it feels to me like what they are doing and i imagine it will continue as the show goes on is there are moments in the game that didn't get a whole lot of time that can get more time because of the format that they have yeah, at their disposal. Show. You don't have gameplay um, to sort of get in the way of that. Well, I don't want to say it like getting because it almost feels like what they said about Halo, right? Like, I don't want to video games. It's not that there's limitations. It's that there's different challenges that you have to deal with when telling a story. When you're making a video game where the predominant, you know, thing that you do in gameplay is combat. It's just something you have to think about when you're like writing that story is we need this to lead into combat and we need this to be something that can organically emerge out of like a combat section or, you know, exploration, right? The balancing act. There's not really a lot of time in The Last of Us 
to do a story like in the game to do that story that we just saw there it just seems yeah. like it wouldn't quite fit it would probably be a section that would be not very fun to play because it wouldn't be a whole lot of like engaging mechanics to grapple with and so it's like a story that can be told in this medium and it's like yeah that that's cool that you can tell that story and you can still essentially have it lead into where the game was anyway of joel and ellie go there they get the car and then they move on. It's just that the way that Bill, you know, interacts with them or like feeds into their story is just different now because it's, you know, it's it's adaptation, right? This is an interesting adaptation in that it feels like they're very thoughtfully deviated from the source material rather than looking at what the source material was and going, yeah, I mean, that was all right for like the dumb shooty game, but like we're like yeah. television writers. We're going to like, we're going to go for a real amazing story here with Halo, the television show. Yeah, it it's doesn't just take what the games were and shit all over it. It it doesn't exist in spite of the games. Absolutely it is not. like it's an extension of them. It's an alternate telling of the games. And it, I feel it, like it's reflected in a lot of the choices that like the fact that they brought the original composer along, right? Like the fact that they brought him along to create the music for the show. It just feels like it's still the like The Last of Us. It still feels like it's part of this uh I say franchise, right? That includes one game that I don't like at all. <laughs> but like it's <laughs> you know, it, it, it feels like a um appropriate adjustment adjacent story in a yeah, sense to has, what was there in the game it has nods to the game it doesn't say anything that's like uh games aren't those dumb or we we've yeah. we've matured past that or we're, we're a higher form of storytelling i mean just the yeah. fact that um like in this uh, you you mentioned that the car was the same kind of car i'm like well that means you have to they had to put work and effort into finding exactly the right well, chevy even, even making the sure costumes, it's the right, right color you know joel's yeah. got the green plaid shirt Ellie's got like the red shirt with the um like gray brown undershirt. There's a lot of instances where it seems like they're they're like, we know what the games look like. I'm gonna find ways to try and parallel. Like even the window, right? It kind of looks like the window on the menu screen, not yep. peeled up and with like, you know, green overcoming every single thing, but it's it's kind of like similar framing. Yeah, it's like a happy version of that. It's a happy window. Bittersweet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll yeah, go with bittersweet, yeah. Yeah. Because it was a life well lived as far as they were concerned. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, it is. I don't know. It's nice to see that the people who made this show, like the writers, clearly like got together, and they didn't just come up with shit and throw it at sc at the screen and then hope that the big budget or the love of the game would carry them through. Seems like they really uh, do want to do some stuff here. They really want to write some characters and sequences, and yeah. I appreciate that immensely. Well, what do you think about the idea that people don't like this because it is filler? I think that only comes from a mindset who think that the only thing that can be worthwhile to watch is a progression of plot as it relates to a specific element of what they want to see. Because this was essentially a story that had a beginning, a middle, and an end that is going to assist other characters in fulfilling their own plot lines. And at that point, if you don't like that, then my question is, why are you watching? What is actually the purpose? Is, a, is the progression of a plot not the means to an end to communicate what characters are like and how they behave, moral lessons and themes. Is it all just, are you, are you so plot focused you forget kind of that plot can be a vehicle to explore other things that are arguably more like meaningful and emotional? Seems like they, they might be sort of losing the forest for the trees here. There's uh, a lot, I think, to gain even with the nuts and bolts, like, oh, did we get plot progression? It's like, well, they made it to Bill's. We got a history with who Bill is and what he means to Joel and Tess. And then they got a bunch of resources and we've developed a little bit more of uh, Ellie and Joel's relationship. And he's set ground rules now for how they're going to do things going forward. They have a car. They have extra supplies. They're moving on. And you could be like, oh, pff, yeah, but that's not worth an hour and 15 minutes. And I'd be like, oh, well, that's, I'm just saying that it's not filler. If you go from the previous episode to the next episode, you will have missed out a huge chunk yeah, of like you'll what wonder, happened. How the fuck do they have a car? Where, and, and of course, the payoff of, you know, Ellie's gun. Where the hell did she get that? Yeah, like we've there done. There are setups and there's, yeah, there's stuff going on with Joel and Ellie here. Yeah. But as you just put it, I, I feel like it's impossible to argue in case that there was a full story in this one episode. Exactly. I'm not sure how yeah. filler is even identified anymore but then you have to get into the reality of like is filler yeah, always bad ads. yep uh, i mean remember well, by that logic a lot of like virtually all of like star trek and all sorts of other shows were filler there wasn't an overarching plot there was it, it's well, a journey not a destination that, uh, there are plenty of episodes of a lot of television that is just um maybe house isn't a great example <laughs> the season but... premiere the season <laughs> finale of, of house that's like where a lot of the story for the season, you, you could can say like the big stuff 
stuff happens. Right. Supernatural um, season one, I'm pretty sure you can watch episode like 1, 15, and 24 or something, and you've got the yeah. full story of the season. A lot of television was, um, a lot of TV shows weren't very serialized at all. There'd be like a very loose ongoing story, but otherwise it was just. Yeah, it might pop yeah, up here yeah. and there. Yeah, and, and it's just recurring characters, maybe. What they're trying to crack general, is getting a formula yeah. that people enjoy watching and can watch out of order. That's what the world was back in the day when you caught things. Yeah, yeah. The, the episode, yeah, the episode on TV was the episode on TV. So that's the one you're yeah, exactly. watching. So. And that's. It's a format that's still reflected in, you know, like those types of shows now, like NCIS, right? Probably still has that same format. But then you got, you know, now we're in the era of streaming and the era of streaming seems to have really brought to the forefront stuff that used to just exclusively be like HBO shows. Yeah. Serialized long, television. And so really long movies, essentially. If what they kind mean of. is it's like empty calories and they're not getting anything out of it, that would be, I think, I mean, your mistake in calling it filler at that point. Because that could still be valid. I, it's just that... Also, in this episode, empty calories, nah. <laughs> That's from, <laughs> that uh, like, obviously, even, but at least even the analogy is odd. As if you don't, you can't enjoy and cherish and savor things if they don't have calories in them. Yeah, what did we know? learn from this episode? If not that, that's not the way that it should be. It, what was that was what Frank was trying to tell and teach Bill. I think one of the mistakes being made in regard to the filler topic is that if Joel and Ellie aren't in the scene, it's filler. Yeah, yeah. Right? yeah, it has to be specifically hyper focused on these two characters right now, and if they're yeah, if they're not included, I, mean, I got more Joel and Ellie than I was expecting from how many people. I wasn't sort expecting of, as much Joel and Ellie. Yeah, you know, a decent chunk of them at the end, and I mean honestly, one of my favorite moments is Joel realizing that Bill basically said, "Make sure to look after Tess." Yep. Yeah, yeah. that was a that sucks for him. Off. Even if the letter wasn't there, and they like they just went to the house and said, "Oh." There's a truck, cool. Like if they just found the keys and then they just left. It would be weaker storytelling, but I would still consider that Bill's story being told in this universe worthwhile. Like I think it was, I think it was, it was worth worthwhile. the investment of time. I think it's going to match the that point whole life play out. This IP is trying to make, right? It's like The Last of Us, like all people. Yeah, like what exactly. They've, what they've lost, what they've lived, what they've... Well, know. and the last of what remains of them as people, right? The last of... Yeah. Uh... Yeah, like a more humanity. literal, the, the, the few numbers that remain of human beings, but also what remains of their humanity. Yes, that's right. We're all upset. Well, some of us are upset about The Last of Us 2, okay? But like, <laughs> you're, as, you're as good as the latest thing you've made, right? And Neil Druckmann is significantly involved in this. Everyone keeps talking I, about how it's going to go bad, though. It's like, well, should we call that I don't out know. I, when I, it I, happens? I, I guess when it happens... happens. If well, it happens, is, we'll call it out. But until the then, good pretty good. I don't know, man, though. Three episodes in, they've been pretty strong. This is probably the best one. In fact, no, I'd say this is the best one of the, the three. Um, I would say so, too, yeah. It's just, it, I don't know, man. How many more good episodes do you have to get before you start to get on side a little bit, you know? I'm just well, like, how yeah, many bad ones right does it so take until everyone goes, ooh? Well, I mean, you know, it, it can only I mean, take guys, one, House of the Dragon had a bad episode, but that season was great. It did so, have a bad I mean, episode, and that's true. Yeah. You know, well, take, so far, take what so, you can get, man. Because with this with this show, so far, so good is basically, uh, is basically where I'm at. Yeah, and I'm, I'll be happy to see another one. You know, keep going. I'm still interested. I want to know what happens next. Or rather, I know what happens next, but I'd be curious to see how I'm you adapt it. I'm interested to see how it plays out. Yeah. Yeah. For as much as it's like, yeah, there's a great framework. It's like, well, yeah, but you still got to have all of the talent, you know, directed in service of, uh, of of leveraging it and utilizing it. And so far, yeah, it's been like oh, acting's yeah. been great. The music's been great. The production design has been phenomenal. Like this, been this, very this, impressive. this show feels so goddamn tangible and the world it feels is so lived in. Oh, yeah. Very believable. You don't you don't doubt yeah. for a second that this is a real place with real people. It's almost distracting with how not distracting it is, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I, get, I yeah. totally get what you mean. Yeah. Well, it's authentic. I remember reading a bit about the the production design approach. Craig was saying he has a rule with his sets is that you set it up, destroy it, and then set it up again. Make it look like an apocalypse happened. And then you kind of maybe over design it a little bit, maybe, as opposed to like actually having a real set and then like destroying it in a realistic way and then decorating it with like foliage and like fungal growth. Or whatever, and, and you have like... all sorts of places that are just run down and derelict anyway. There's all yeah. sorts of places that are just out there that have been abandoned and they've fallen apart naturally. Yeah, I think this has done a good job as well, just with their test and uh, this almost message from Bill that we'll be getting all the motivation we need to make Joel do some crazy shit in favor of Ellie. Yeah, um, 
Specifically when we get to the cannibals plotline, you know? Because uh, I think one of the lines from Bill is like, God help any motherfucker that stands in our way when we have someone to protect. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's the thing for me. I'll be like, I'm looking forward to see how all this will pay off. I wonder how well they'll do it. Um, I think that was a really solid episode. I give it a big old thumb up the bum. Um, yeah, I good. too give it a thumb up the bum. I would even say two thumbs up the bum. Why not? Yeah, maybe even different bums. I don't know. Experimental. All Just, right. Uh, well, thanks for listening, everybody. Cool hat. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see you for the next one. Bye. That's right. Bye. Bye. See you later, everybody. Bye. The fence. The fence will kill the rest of them. What'd you bring me?